Welcome to Next Game's Omen series. This video covering Omen farming strategies specifically as it relates to Red Mage. Now, as the video goes on, we will discuss farming strategies while showing the battle example itself. We're going to do all this on the Red Mage job with the Ninja sub job using the Crochet Moors in my main hand. This video is the result of a request of one of my Patreon supporters who requested that I post some other Omen farming videos but using some other jobs. I've also recently had some subscribers request that I post some more updated omen farming videos, so here we go. Now, omen farming isn't really complicated, but it can feel overwhelming to returning players, and like so many things, it's gonna seem much easier after you've seen someone else do it. So, for the first farming video, we're gonna be showcasing Red Mage. Now, the first thing you want to remember is that you yourself need to find a way to do most of the damage. Your trust can only really be relied upon for 5-10% to 10 of the total DPS output. So if you're on a mage or support job, don't think you can just let your trust do the damage. You will still need to be able to do that 90-95% to 95 of the damage in order to clear all of these mobs in time. Now for red mage, you want to make sure that you have a TP set with dual wield 14 in it, as well as lots of multi-hit and store TP. You also want to make sure that you have a good amount of evasion, as you will often have a few mobs on you. You also want to make sure that you have a good weapon skill set. On Red Mage, you can focus on Savage Blade if you have a Nagling, or simply spam Shant de Sieg with a critical hit heavy weapon skill set. Now ideally, you want to crochet Moors on Path C, which is what I'm using in this particular video, and you will cut through mobs even quicker, but you can definitely accomplish solid farming with Red Mage without using the crochet or the specific gear that you see me using in this video. It'll just, of course, speed up the run. Now, in regards to trust on Red Mage, I suggest you use August, Matsui P, or another Magic Burster, Joaquim, Monboro, and Yoren Oren. Now each has a specific purpose that I'll go over as we go along. I do know that Monboro can take some time to get if you are just returning to the game. So if you are just returning to the game, no, he is not essential. You can easily use any other healer in his spot, such as Kupipi. Now to farm Omen, you're going to be taking on mobs on three different floors. On floor one, you will be taking on eight flies and eight tigers, one of each of those groups being a transcended NM mob. You have 10 minutes to beat this floor. Now on floor two, you will take on eight beetles and eight leeches, one of each of those families being a transcended NM mob. And you will get a 10 minute time extension if you make it to this floor. Now on floor three, you're gonna take on eight rabbits, mandoragas, lizards, birds, porksies, Panops and Pixies. Once again, each of those families having a single transcended NM mob in the middle of them. If you make it to this floor, you're going to get a 30 minute time extension. Now on each floor, you will start with one primary objective that appears in the log when you enter the run, or enter the floor. Now this is the objective that will unlock your progress to the next floor. It will be one of the following objectives. Either one, vanquish one specific monster, the next is vanquish a specific number of Sweetwater or normal enemies. The next one will be vanquish all transcended foes or vanquish all foes. Very rarely you can also get one that will say that you just get a free floor and the exit will automatically open. Now once you engage an enemy, additional objectives are going to appear. Three on floor one and two and ten on floor three. Now these objectives cannot be completed by all jobs, so it's important to know which ones to go for, and I'll go over which ones you should be shooting for with Red Mage shortly. Now the secondary objectives will give you job cards once a certain number have been completed, which can be used to upgrade your artifact gear to plus three. Note these cards will only drop for the job that you are currently on. Now additionally, Estral Detritus also randomly dropped from the mobs, which can be used to upgrade your Rima weapons to R15 or sold on the auction house for a good amount of gil. So now that you know the objectives, this is how I recommend you go about achieving them. If you are new to Omen, purely focus on getting the primary objective completed and then moving up to the next floor. Do this for a few runs to get familiar with the content. Now if you've done Omen before, I recommend you enter and focus on first accomplishing the three secondary objectives and then work on the primary objective and then go up. Note, this will get you more cards than with our first option, but a lower amount of detritus and capacity points than could be optimal. Now, once you've become very comfortable with soloing Omen on a particular job, I recommend stepping up to focusing on the secondary objective first, and then just simply taking out all the enemies in the floor. This will get you the most job cards, detritus, and capacity points. 
Now once you get quick at this, you should be able to clear floor 1 in 4 to 5 minutes, floor 2 in 4 to 5 minutes, and floor 3 in 17 to 20 minutes with Red Mage. Now this will normally get you 3 to 4 job cards if you took full advantage of the secondary objectives that we're about to go over. Note this can be as high as 7 to 8 during those special event times during the year where you get double the event cards. And you will get 5 to 10 Astral Detritus. But note it can go lower or higher than that on some occasions. Also note that this is influenced by Treasure Hunter. So if you're mindful and can swap in TH4 gear on your Red Mage, on most of the enemies you can actually get as many as 15 to 20 per run from what I've seen. Now let's go ahead and talk about these secondary objectives and which Red Mage should be shooting for in order to get these Red Mage job cards. The first one is Vanquish X Number of Foes. This is very easy for Red Mage to accomplish. Just start killing them and you'll easily accomplish this. It's usually only an enemy or two. The next one is Use X Abilities on Foes. This is what August is for and he will automatically accomplish it for you with all the abilities that he uses. The next one is Use X Spells on Foes. Well, this is simple for Red Mage and Matsui P will also help with accomplishing this objective. Just go ahead and throw out a spell or two and check this one off your list. The next one is perform three magic bursts on your foes. Now this one can be a challenge if you are geared well and using a Crocia as a single weapon skill and a few rounds of attacks can often kill even a transcended enemy. Now I will often cancel and spell damage when I get this objective so that I can do back to back CDC. That Sui P and other magic bursters are good at getting off two magic bursts for you most of the time, so all you have to worry about is doing a single magic burst. Note, if your trust it can't get too off, you want to make sure that you double magic burst yourself so you don't have to skill chain on another transcended enemy. You also want to be careful on floors 1 and 2, as you only get two chances at completing this objective with the two transcended enemies on that floor. Now the next objective that can pop up is deal X critical hits to your foes. This one's very simple and you usually take care of itself within one to two enemies. The next one is use X elemental weapon skills on your foes. If you get this objective, simply switch to elemental weapon skills on Red Mage for the needed number of times and then switch back to your usual damaging weapon skill. The next one is use X physical weapon skills on your foes. This is obviously an easy one since you're already using physical weapon skills and it'll normally take care of itself within one to two enemies. The next one is use X weapon skills on your foes. So this one doesn't matter whether you use elemental weapon skills or physical weapon skills. Obviously, since you're spamming physical weapon skills, this one will also take care of itself within one to two enemies. The next possible objective is reduce your foes hit points by at least 2000 damage in a single auto attack. This is fairly easy for Red Mage to accomplish as long as you have a good TP gear set and have temper up. The next one is reduce your foe's hit points by at least 30,000 hit points in a single weapon skill. Now this is one of those that can be a challenge for Red Mage to take on. I have managed to get it on a few occasions, but overall it's a very low percentage. So this is one of those that sadly you normally are not going to be able to achieve unless you have some really good gear and are set up in a very good situation. The next one is reduce your foe's hit points by at least 30,000 in a single magic burst. And this is another one that is hard for Red Mage. I have not been able to get it done a single time, but again, with a best in slot setup, I guess it might be possible. I definitely was not able to achieve it though with my trust setup here. The next possible objective that you can get is reduce your foe's hit points by at least 15,000 in a single magic attack that is not a magic burst. This is the third one that I have problems accomplishing on Red Mage and have not been able to achieve. But again, I assume under the right circumstances and with best in slot elemental gear, it should be possible. However, these last three I've mentioned, the reduce your foe's hit points by at least 30,000 in a single weapon skill, 30,000 in a single magic burst, or 15,000 in a single magic attack are the three that are normally difficult to achieve in a trust setup with Red Mage. Now the last objective that can come up is restore at least 500 hit points 10 times. Now this one can be a challenge to complete in time on floors 1 and 2. Now about the only way to actually accomplish this on floors 1 and 2 is to run in and grab 3 to 6 mobs, the higher number the better, whatever you're comfortable with handling, and pull them to a safe spot and slowly kill them while you let them beat on you and allow your mages to cure you and you can even cure yourself. Make sure not to recast your shadows or you're not probably going to finish in time. Now on floor 3 this is pretty easily done by just pulling and leaving an extra mob or two on you. It's just really on floors 1 and 2 that this can be a challenge to finish in time. So if you see this as one of your objectives on those floors, get to work on it right away. Now if you have good enhancing gear on Red Mage, you will normally only have to buff twice during this run. 
once at the very start, and then once during or right after the lizards on floor 3. I recommend starting with the bunnies on floor 3 and killing in a clockwise fashion. This will have you ending on the panops, which are slightly more annoying than most mobs. Go ahead and silence them if you're having trouble. And fairies that can full dispel your buffs, so try not to feed them too much TP before you take them down. And that's also why we save those two for the last in the run. Now in regards to buffs on Red Mage, there's a lot of them. Obviously, protect and shell. You also want to make sure you have its sesame up at all times, unless you're trying to achieve that cure objective. Have stone skim up, composure, and thunder, temper, phalanx, shock spikes, haste two, refresh three, gain dex, and if you're on a transcended enemy and aren't quite geared properly let, and it's taking you a while, go ahead and frazzle and dia as well. Now be sure not to pull too many mobs, and that is unless you want to. What I mean by that is, when you first start off, pull the mobs far away so that you make sure you don't actually aggro any additional mobs as you're fighting it. But as you get more comfortable with Omen, feel free to fight right inside of the groups of mobs to purposely aggro additional mobs to make for an easy transition to the next mob once the current one is defeated. This will save you tons of time. Just be sure not to pull more than you can handle. Also take note that the Manragoras can hit particularly fast, so be sure not to pull too many of those at the same time, as they can take you out fairly quickly. Okay, that should be it for farming with Red Mage and Omen. We are part way through the final floor here, so I'm going to go ahead and let it keep playing to give you an idea of what to expect on a full run, and then I'll be back at the end to say goodbye. Go ahead and enjoy the rest of the run, everyone.
And that will be it for how to farm Omen with Red Mage. I hope you found that helpful. In the next video in this series, I'll go ahead and bring in Thief to show you how to maximize your Astral Detritus potential. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Stay safe and stay healthy out there.